Welcome back to the Zero to Six Figure series. It's been a few days and so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about first of all the portfolio, the recent drawdown in the market. We're then going to talk about some of the recent things that have been going on in the world of crypto. And lastly, we're going to talk about two sectors that I think are worth paying attention to at the moment. And I'll talk about some of the reasons why I'm looking at them, some of the projects that I'm potentially looking at there as well. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Again, we're going to have three parts of this video, so please watch whichever part of the video you want. Today, we're going to look at the portfolio. So at the moment, we're looking at around $40,683. This actually did fall quite a bit um, in the recent dump. I think we a portfolio actually all time was around, if I, uh, maybe I can't see it over here, but uh, we, were, we were around $46,000 at one point. Here we go. Yeah, 46,000. And we fell all the way down to 37. The market did dump. Um, and uh, I think we, we did actually talk about this in the last episode. We talked about kind of Bitcoin come, kind of coming down and then kind of being choppy in this range, which is exactly what it looks like is going on at the moment. Now, if we actually have a look at the actual drawdown itself, I believe it was around 17 and a half percent. And on altcoins, it was significantly more. I think we're talking like 20%, 25%. Now, of course, not alt, not every altcoin, but uh, I think we did see it like across the board. Um, I think if we look at Solana, for example, that drew down 23%. Uh, and I think like a similar case with, uh, with ETH as well, drawing down like... Um, 25%, like really big drawdowns here. Um, and it does look like uh, we kind of had this like false false uh, rejection from this uh, from this area, not rejection, false fall from this re from this area. And we've kind of come back into this range where I actually think things are just going to be a little bit choppy for a while before kind of moving up later on. I don't see like anything uh, to cause the markets to kind of go back up all of a sudden. I guess part of the reason why uh, is because um, I think if we look at the inflows, um, we've had three negative inflows at the moment, negative day inflows with the Bitcoin ETF, uh, with uh, yesterday's being minus 260 million. Um, if I'm being honest, I think when it comes to looking at the ETF inflows, uh, I do think it is a little bit reflexive where I think like TradFi or, or retail users who are basically participating in the Bitcoin ETF may look at the charts or may look at the, the this recent pullback and get a little bit scared. Um, and I think like they probably do FOMO in a lot. So when the price does go up, I think naturally you see people more interested and want to buy more Bitcoin. Um, I think... Uh, that's probably one reason. Um, and secondly, I, I think perhaps there was some profit taking. I mean, I, I mentioned this in the last episode too, but like, uh, I mean, these guys uh, like were able to buy like, you know, from 40,000, 45,000, $50,000, like the whole of February was a great time for them to buy and they're like up massively. And so I think naturally there was going to be some profit taking anyway. So I think there's probably a mul multitude of reasons. We probably did deserve some sort of pullback, especially after the, the the insanity that we've had in recent weeks with meme coin season. Um, I think it got topped off with Slurf. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have, have seen it, but essentially this is a dev who um, created this meme coin called Slurf. Uh, they had a pre-sale and the dev accidentally ac accidentally uh, burnt 100% uh, of the tokens from the presale, um, and uh, ultimately that means that there's like a hundred million dollars of liquidity now uh, because this <laughs> this token, like this meme coin, like absolutely pumped after. I mean, like. <laughs> it's probably one of the one of the best distributions ever for a meme coin it's it's gone crazy 400 million ftv i think we actually saw like some solana meme coins actually reach like a billion dollar plus uh there were there were a couple of them uh, i think uh i can't remember the names off the top of my head like within one day um we still have like really really good strength on whiff like two billion dollar market cap um bonk as well like the, the i think the meme coin season has been pretty insane and uh, i i think now actually what's happening is we're seeing a bit of that rotation flow into base um where I, i'm seeing like a lot of meme coins like Degen now at 336 million, Brett at 300 million, uh, Toshi at 127 million, like uh, Normie as well at 100 million. Like these are like some of the big, big popular meme coins at the moment that is on uh, TYBG as well. That That is on base. Uh, I think we're just seeing some rotations kind of flow over here. But as I mentioned before, the market is choppy. So 
we are seeing like very volatile days, like plus 10%, minus 10% on altcoins. And you can see that naturally in my portfolio as well. Like you can see like some of these altcoins minus 12%, minus 11%. Uh, and like on the on the weekly, like we're, we're still down a lot on ETH. We're down on Gearbox, Butterfly, pretty much all of my alts down badly. Um, but is that anything... F is there anything really for me to worry about? No, because I think this is expected. This is part of the part of the cycle. You have crazy volatility on the upside, but also on the downside. Um, and to be honest, last cycle I had way more volatility than this. So like ten percent doesn't phase me whatsoever. Even even fifteen twenty percent doesn't phase me. Um, I, I remember last cycle going through some very very difficult drawdowns where I really had to stomach it a little bit uh seeing uh alts go down like 50 percent 60 percent uh and then recover and do 10x after that so <laughs> that's part of the part, part of the cycle that we're in you do kind of um have to try and put your emotions aside when it comes to investing and kind of stomach the the volatility that comes with it uh, and i think when you do your research and when you find assets or altcoins with good fundamentals um generally you'll find that they perform well uh, and, and I think uh, fundamentals also includes things like marketing and uh, tokenomics because they also play a really important role in making sure that your your, your tokens do well over time uh, and I think you got to also link that with like VC unlocks unlocks in general uh, inflation all of these things you got to kind of really come up with them together and once you've come up with your with your thesis if you find good solid projects generally you'll be doing okay in the long run and that's probably why if you look at like my portfolio generally over time uh, I'm pretty much up on most of the altcoins I think the two that I'm not up on are the most recent additions that I literally just added like a couple of weeks ago and I actually did double down and kind of buy some more Tau um, and I also did decide to buy a bit more Shadow uh, I sold some of the ETH to basically fund some of this um, so that's probably why you, you, you've noticed some changes from last episode you may also notice that I have actually taken out some other altcoins um, I did actually sell SSV which uh, did have a quite a nice pump actually uh it's even up eight percent today uh and you can see like ssv like hardly got affected by this drawdown whatsoever i did feel like it was time to part with this altcoin um a couple of reasons one uh i think like uh with the with the uh, ETH staking uh, and ETH like maybe restaking uh, ecosystem, I felt like I had pretty good exposure with both Gearbox and Redacted already, uh, and and with ETH itself, and so I felt like I was perhaps a little bit more a, a little bit exposed, uh, and also like uh, I I felt like the the potential ROI going from you know I think it's like 600, 700 million uh, market cap at the moment probably wasn't as high as what I can expect on some of these other ones. So yes, it is pumping right now, uh, and, and I'm glad that it is because it did end up making some very good gains on it uh, but we've basically consolidated that into buying more tau uh, which uh, i think i probably will continue to be buying over time i i think um if you guys want bit tense a deep dive let me know in the comment section below uh, if you guys are interested i could potentially make that so um i think that covers like the first part of this video talking about um the the market and the portfolio in general and kind of some of the things that have happened um Oh, here you go. One more thing uh, to just basically highlight, like the Bitcoin ETFs currently hold 4%, just over 4% of the uh, total Bitcoin supply. So that's pretty much like some of the stuff that's happened in, in the market recently. Um, yeah, uh, nothing really more to add there. Look, things that we've had a drawdown, altcoins are down a decent amount. You had some very good buying opportunities at the bottom if you were able to catch anything. This is basically the area, well, around this area. Um, un under this is basically when I decided to buy a little bit more tau and also some shadow probably should have bought more if i could but um you know it is what it is and i'm sure we will have uh, more opportunities because i do think things are going to be choppy i'm not expecting things to just go like that i'm not expecting that whatsoever i'm expecting choppiness um uh, until like uh, we get better inflows coming in from from the etf until like um some of this stuff just calms down a little bit funding rates are still sky high i think they need to calm down a little bit uh, and i think we need to just consolidate a little bit uh, consolidation is healthy um i think if things just go up only they come down just as fast so um that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about uh, today in terms of like my portfolio and also the, the recent changes in the market. I'll, I'll be honest, there isn't really much else I'm going to change in the portfolio at the moment. 
other than the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video which is which is like the two kind of sectors that i'm potentially looking at when it comes to adding something to the portfolio or like doing some uh, swing trades at the moment uh, and those are the modular ecosystem and the bitcoin ecosystem so first of all let's talk about modularity there are a number of really good projects that i think uh like w will play a really good role in, in the modular ecosystem i think modularity is like a massive thing now we're seeing um the especially with the rise of celestia kind of with data availability kind of splitting um the the modular stack uh, and kind of having execution layers data availability layers things like that are, are, are a real narrative and i think definitely will have attention um th this uh, crypto twitter account which i recommend following um actually helps uh, to really break down co complex concepts with with really really nice threads actually uh this this person has basically written a few projects that i think are, are worth considering when it, when when looking into the modular ecosystem movement labs cartesi uh fuel as well which is upcoming hasn't just come out yet fluent which i'm not even that familiar with at the moment so that's something on my research list but like I did uh, actually go one step further and basically create a, a list of uh, pretty much all of the modular projects. Uh, shout out to Andy. Um, you can follow him on Crypto Twitter as well. I'll leave his at in the description below. Um, but basically, this is his list uh, that I've basically compiled from a bunch of his tweets, actually. Uh, and so you've got uh, I'm not even going to bother reading them out. You can actually pause the video and have a look at some of these. Um, but we've got, uh, I think, 60 plus modular projects. So I think like when you've got this amount of well, this number of projects coming out, uh, there's naturally going to be a lot of hype, a lot of marketing, a lot of branding. Uh, and like this whole concept of modularity um, is going to be really, really big. And so this is something that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, and I think like will do pretty well. And so the question is like, which projects from these um, are, are worth looking into? What you'll find is the majority of these don't have a token at the moment. And so there's a number of things you could do. You can airdrop farm them. So you can go on their test nets or use their projects. Um, the ones that are on, on mainnet, you can go in their Discord, complete the Galaxy tasks, all that sort of stuff and farm those airdrops because I think a number of these are going to have airdrops. You probably make five figures plus maybe tw maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars like across airdrops from all of these if you play it right. Uh, some of them do have tokens already. So we know that Celestia has a token. We know that uh, Polygon, Dimension, Alt Layer, uh, Gelato. Um, we know, let me just skim through some of these. Mode, I mean, actually Mode doesn't have a token just yet. My apologies. But essentially a few of them do. And so that is something that I'm looking at right now in th and, and coming up and trying to think which of those are going to be good tokens to invest in. Uh, I haven't come up with that decision just yet, but hopefully you may see that some something reflected in the portfolio in due time. Uh, but otherwise, I think some of these that will come out will do multiple Xs. And so I am looking to try and find the best from this list and uh, maybe you'll see that in the portfolio in due time. So yeah, uh, the alpha is basically, if you have time, go through all of these 60, figure out which one the best is, because some of these are, are, are going to be worth a lot. And what you'll find is that uh, like some of these have like got a lot of backing. Like let's take Espresso, for example, right? This is a project that raised today. And like um, if I go to their Twitter, let's see if I can find it. Espresso, right? Look at this today even. They raised $28 million in a Series B funding round led by A16Z. And look at the, look at like who the investors are from, you know, Polygon, Injective, Eclipse, like Frax, Altlayer. Um, these are big, big, big protocols. And like A16Z is like one of the biggest uh, VCs in the space. So uh, yeah, like, I mean, that is literally the first one on the list many many of these have like raised a ridiculous amount of money and so yeah i just think in general modularity i need it in my portfolio um i haven't figured out which of these projects i will have i mean i guess you could argue i do have some exposure via polygon already but i mean i i think i want something proper modular um 
there was even an airdrop for like a uh, NIM network today, actually. So, um, yeah, uh, though you will have opportunities to get airdrops if you farm these properly. But yeah, I'm not going to spend mu much more time talking about this modularity. I think you get the point. I'm bullish on it, right? Second one is basically Bitcoin ecosystem. Now, um, uh, I'm pretty bullish on ordinals in general. Um, I think like they make so much sense. I actually wrote a piece in my Substack uh, on it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But yeah, basically, I think paying attention to to Bitcoin ordinals is really, really important. Uh, we're already seeing like, you know, node monkeys pumping to like $50,000, uh, Bitcoin puppets going to $20,000 and like having like $20,000 in airdrops as well. Quantum cats at $20,000 floor price. To be honest with you, it wouldn't surprise me if these continue to go up or, the, or these collections get airdrops and, and other rewards like that. We've already seen that. But what's more interesting to me is the upcoming release of runes. Now, this is a new technology coming to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Uh, there is a, an article that Xverse wrote, which talks about Bitcoin rules. And essentially, to, to basically summarize it, they are fungible ordinal tokens they use uh, the utxo uh, model and so they are better than brc20s which kind of congested the bitcoin network a lot they're a lot more efficient um so i think we're going to see a lot of speculation here and now, now remember we saw brc20 tokens go to absolutely ridiculous market caps um back in the maybe quarter three of 2023 I think runes uh, are going to have a, a similar a similar impact. And uh, Casey, uh, who basically is the, the creator of Ordinals, is also the creator of runes. So runes are this kind of new token standard coming to Bitcoin. I'm super excited about this, and I'm definitely going to be partaking in like whatever kind of new rune tokens come out. Um, so you can see like some of the difference between runes and BRC20s. BRC20s did amazing. Runes are just better. And so, yeah, there will be probably meme coins and other speculative instruments that come out to begin with but uh i think there's still potentially very good money to be made there so that's my alpha for you um i guess for those of you who actually watched all the way to this point in the video there is a third category um and that is intense um again i won't talk about intense too much right now but intense are a really really interesting piece of technology um we have a variety of protocols using them already um things like cal protocol uh, intent x simio pair protocol uh, and i think some of them will potentially be having tokens tokens in the very near future. I have exposure to Simeo uh, by uh, basically locking up some tokens back in the end of 2023. We talked about that on the channel as well. Um, so I'm waiting for this token to go live. And when it does, uh, I'm really intrigued to see how well it performs because I think there will be a whole narrative around intent. So those are three narratives. We've talked about modularity, the Bitcoin ecosystem with runes, uh, and lastly, intents. Those three I'm paying ver like close attention to uh, and I'm definitely going to be allocating to probably all three so that's what I'm going to cover today smash the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll be back with plenty more content in the near future